Okay, so um, thank you for the opportunity to present this tonight. Uh, my name is Marco Tomasi. I'm one for I'm from the Architects Commission Architects. Uh, we designed this scheme, uh, which is uh, before you tonight. Um, we started working on the site uh, roughly a year ago. We had a pre-app uh, in the spring last year with the local authority, and uh, subsequently we submitted an, app an application, which was validated at the end of uh, last year. We received some comments uh, from the council uh, early, the, early this year and uh, we made uh, a number of changes to the scheme in response to those comments. Um, the comments were largely about uh, technical matters, highways, access, servicing, but also uh, about um, the viability of a previous proposal regarding um, the conversion of the pub uh, to residential use and the retention of the pub use on the ground floor. And uh, we've made some uh, changes to that, which I'll talk you through in, in a minute. So um, the site is uh, 350 London Road, uh, Mitcham, um, just opposite the Cricket Green. You can see here on this aerial view, it includes the White Hart pub at the front, which is a great to listed building, and sits within the Cricket Green conservation area. This is an extra from the conservation area uh, plan. Um, there are a number of other listed buildings around uh, the site which make up um, the core of the conservation area. There is the Burn Bullock pub uh, opposite, which is also listed. Uh, there's Vestry Hall down, uh, down the road, and there's a number of other buildings that either are listed, locally listed, or make a positive contribution to the conserva conservation area. So it is a, a sensitive uh, area and um, which obviously requires careful consideration when uh, designing a building that uh, goes uh, into it. Um, the site as it is uh, contains, as I said, the pub uh, with, a, with a long leg at the back. The pub dates back from the 17th century um, and has been pretty much bottled in its, in its present form uh, at the end of the 18th century. Uh, it has a main building at the front and this uh, long leg at the back. The rest of the site is largely empty and occupied by a car park. Um, there used to be something, uh, there used to be a large function room there um, added in, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century which was demolished in the 90s. Um, there are um, a couple of other images here showing the PTAR rating of the, of the, of the site, uh, which is three and a diagram which shows the main principles that we've adopted in uh, the redevelopment of the site. Uh, so you can see that we've decided to keep the pub and uh, all of its uh, ancillary areas as they are. And that's a change from the original application where we were removing this element here, which is a later addition, and we're converting the upper floors to residential use. We're not doing that anymore. So the pub and all its ancillary spaces are staying as they are. And the building that we are adding sits at the back. Um, it uh, matches uh, the height of the, of the neighbouring properties. This is um, a, a, some ho a housing scheme just adjacent to us, with it, which is three storeys with a pitch roof. Um, the building that we are proposing at the back is um, varies between three and four storeys. So it's roughly uh, similar to uh, what we have at the back. We've got quite generous distances to neighbouring properties, especially these to the, to the north, we've got over 20 metres, and there's some existing trees along the boundary that uh, provide further screening. One of the key elements that we assessed in designing the scheme was uh, the impact of the new build uh, from the conservation area, from the cricket green. And this is what these views are illustrating there. You can see that, um, from a visual, uh, from a position uh, along this, the, the, the frontage just opposite, we can, looking straight at the White Hart, um, the, uh, the proposal sits right behind it, and this is from a distance of 65 metres, um, and it, you can see that there's a very limited uh, amount of building that can be seen, and as we get closer, about 50 metres, we can only really see that little uh, side there and the top of the building completely disappears behind the White Heart. So we try to make sure that 
there's as little impact as possible on towards the center of the conservation area. <coughs> Beyond the 65 meters, we are 100 meters from, from the building. So there will be some visibility, but it, it's actually in the background very much. Uh, I think these are the other way around, so I'll start with this one. Um, we can see that this is the um, same series of diagrams that illustrate the thought process and the determining the, the form that we've adopted. And it's obviously a bit simplified, but you can see that we try to continue the masting there uh, for the residential building, and then uh, have a building that occupies the car park uh, going uh, towards the back of the site. The main uh, purpose of this uh, element is to mediate between the scale of the existing uh, annex to the pub and what we're doing at the back. And that was also something we discussed with the heritage office at, at the first pre-app. And um, it was uh, felt that it was quite important to make sure that both in character and mass, the building at the front uh, was sympathetic uh, to what's happening in the courtyard. And that's what we've been doing with, uh, by shaping the roof of this block to come down and meet the eave line of the existing annex. And then it's gently sloped up uh, to a four, three storey. So we've got two and a half and three, which matches the height of that. This partially hides the building at the back, which is a floor higher, but again, with the top floor mm. hidden behind uh, a roof. Um, the roof shape um, is also something that we played with and helped us um, shape the building so that it's less visible from, from the cricket green. So you can see that uh, a notional uh, visual cone from opposite the white heart uh, ideally shaves off uh, the element of, of the volume that would be too prominent. It's not the only uh, way we use to determine the massing. It, um, the shape of the building also responds to the site. This slight angle uh, allows us to retain all the trees around the site. And that's why we decided to, to do that, whilst uh, allowing for a more generous space at the front. But at the same end, also, all these lines are a result of that slight torsion. And that's really what determines the shape of the roof. Shape of the roof that, uh, by virtue of providing a pitch roof throughout the building, in our view, uh, makes it uh, fit in better with the context. Uh, it has a reference to the traditional shapes around it. We deliberately didn't choose to have a more uh, traditional language in the architectural uh, treatment of the facade, so we went for something quite similar, uh, quite, sorry, simple and contemporary, so you can see that the facade affronting the, the, the courtyard is actually uh, quite pared uh, down with, with simple windows and a, a brick uh, treatment. The whole of the building will be finished in brick, uh, white brick at the front, relating to, to the pub, and a slightly darker brick at the back, which picks up from the uh, neighbouring properties. Just a couple of words on the internal layout. We've got 15 units now. We've got uh, all the units are dual aspect at least, or triple aspect. Um, they are over four levels. There's a mix of one, two, and three bedroom uh, flats. Um, we have eight car parking spaces and a delivery and loading bay here, which services both the flats and the pub. We've got communal amenity space for the flats here, and we've got a garden, a beer garden for the pub. So there's a clear separation of the, of the public spaces for both users. Uh, the current affordable offer is just over 35% of our habitable rooms and by units, with uh, social rent units on the ground floor with their own access, and some intermediate units on the first floor. So out of the 15 units, we'll have six affordable units. This is a view of the courtyard, with the beer garden in the foreground, the amenity space for the, for the residents. And this is obviously an aerial view of the pub at the front, existing buildings. This is not existing, this is consented, and our proposals are back. I think that's brilliant. Hold on, we've got 30 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> one but I think you've answered it. Your plan uh, showing the list of buildings and your block plan still seems to show the footprint of the function room which has obviously been demolished. So it used to be the case that we were going to demolish the room and we have now decided to leave it as it is 
No, so I'm sorry. I, I'm not. I'm not making myself clear. On page eleven of, the of your preact. Uh, oh no, of your presentation. Oh, I see. You're right. Yeah, I thought that's. So that, but that that has already gone, hasn't it? Yeah, correct. That's Since fine. 1996. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, actually, there are some beers there. There are just very well-behaved customers. How, how does your development impact the viability of the pub? Um, well, as it stands, um, it doesn't have a direct impact on the functioning of the pub because we are leaving the pub alone, basically. We're just improving the space outside it. Previously, we were proposing to remove all of this area from the pub use and the upper floors of the pub to convert it into residential use. And that was going to leave the pub just on the ground floor and the basement, which isn't very, very large. And we were doing that on the back of um, some uh, reassurances that someone was going to take up the unit and it was viable like that, but that didn't really work. So we, we had to change our plan. And I was, I was just going to add as well that um, I don't know whether your concern was more potentially around noise, perhaps, and, and, and the ability of the pub to operate, but there is a lot of residential use surrounding the pub already, and uh, with this being a new building, it's not a, certainly not uncommon in my experience these days to have residential units quite close to a pub use. It would be obviously suitably mitigated through noise attenuation uh, within the fabric of the building. So I don't see that there's a, there's a concern in that respect. Um, the pub, historically, well, since the mid-90s when the, uh, the dinosaur was removed, had parking, but again, um, we don't see that this is the sort of location where people would really tend to drive to. It's more of a sort of walk to type of section. <coughs> Yes, the bike shed is actually quite low, so it will be just below those those uh, windows. So there was a question about uh, access to these properties, and uh, so we tried to avoid uh, being right in front. So the bike shed should be right there, just under those windows. And the low, and, and that's not a bank, which I just say, sure, I think that's under the bike shed, it's not the building regulation issues with the bike store directly beneath the windows? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, if I, you building, sorry, so the, uh, just one second. We're actually looking at the opposite side. Yes. Um, okay. Because so that, those, windows, those windows, those windows are here. Okay. So the labels were Yes, yeah. those windows are here. Okay. And, and then how far are they away from the No, it's the window there? three looking north that way. So that way, it's here. It's so how far are they from the windows opposite? Well, uh, they're they're in that corner down. They're here. Okay. The, the, the window, I think um, there aren't any residential um, uses behind those windows. I mean, we took another look at the site today. It's very much, um, well, if it is used, it looks pretty unused, but if it is used, it certainly doesn't look to be a residential use. Is the pump functioning at present? Or? No. And if you're the owner of the pub, uh, the land, the building, or? Our client is. Your, your client, yes, yeah. Okay. Is, is anything going to be done to the back of the pub? What, what does the back of the pub look like <coughs> if you're in the, in the building? Is anything going to be done? So, there's a, we are proposing only one slight change to the fabric of the pub, which is uh, an additional door in that position, because there's currently a, a metal staircase that gives access to this wing, 
which sits where we're proposing our new building. So we're replacing that access, which is also a fire escape, with a new internal staircase. Um, the pub is in a pretty good state in terms of external uh, state. It's painted white brick uh, throughout. <coughs> Do you know any precedent where people access their front door via a pub garden? Um, I can't think of any uh, precedent. I, we were never envisaging that this would be the main access uh, to the residence. There's, there's, a, there's a second access from, from the back, which is where all the parking happens, which is where all the refuse is picked up from. And the main entrance to the residential scheme would have always been from there. Uh, the main reason for, for, for this gate, I'm sorry, I should have probably made that clear, is to make sure that the pub can also use the servicing and loading bay at the rear. Mm -hmm. So the residents wouldn't really have a reason to, to use this, this part, which we actually think is a lock. Can you just clarify the south entrance? Because presumably the adjoining property has access rights along that road as well, because it's going to serve more than this property. Um, but your red line boundary, uh, starting from this far south, comes along the boundary and takes a kind of wandering line further and further away from the boundary, yeah. which appears to then leave parking spaces unallocated, and I don't know whose land that remains in, as it were. So is there any restriction on these residents parking off outside of your red line boundary in those, in those parking spaces? So you're quite right, the, the side boundary is quite convoluted yeah. and it took some time to get to the bottom of it because uh, originally we did think that that would be part of our site. Um, these spaces, as, it's, as they stand, they are used by the Wandel Court uh, residents and they are private, they're not part of our site. Uh, they are, there is some informal parking happening on our side of the site and we are going to regularise that and that will be part of our parking space. And there's um, five spaces here and three spaces down there. But on the, th the three linear spaces at the entrance, on the left of the entrance, when having driven in and parked, you then have to drive into the site and follow the service vehicle tracking to get back out again, presumably, unless you, you can't back out. You're not proposing that they back out, are you? No, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't, I, th I have to, I have to read the, the, the transfer statement again, but I think that's the assumption. You wouldn't back out onto uh, Broadway Gardens. So we get the, right, the, the parking that your, potentially your access road gives access to those parking that's off your site, yes. that your residents will somehow be prevented from ever parking in those places, is that right? Well, they would be trespassing. Essentially, they don't belong to them. Would they be allocated? I'm just thinking that I mean, if you don't designate them and put various bollards up and all the rest of it, you're going to find the residents parking in it. Is that yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, if there needs to be signage to police that kind of thing, then absolutely. Or, or harder measures, as you say, like bollards, perhaps. I suppose there would need to be some coordination between the landowners to make that work uh, okay. from a management perspective. But yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. certainly possible. It will have to be managed. <coughs> okay, I'm just looking at it from a design point of view, there's obviously areas where the management kicks in rather than the design. Well, of course, I mean, that's the only access we have to our site, the mm. vehicle access, so we have to use that vehicle access. It just so happens that this, these units rely on our access. Mm. That these parking spaces rely on our access. That's so, it. so, I can't see another side. Any more points of clarification? Yeah. Can I just be absolutely clear? You said that, uh, that there was a gate uh, uh, and that you... Are, are you expecting residents to go in that way or, or, or not? Or are you expecting them to, to come around the back to go into the scheme? Because I, I would have thought that that access is attractive and also a pedestrian route to Mitcham. So I think it, it is a potential. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely there and it's a possibility okay. that it will be used. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be the main use. And if there were issues within you know, this access being shared with the, with the, with the beer garden, because sometimes they tend to be fenced off, so the world kind of wander out from that. There might be some limitations to the amount of permeability that we can have, at least during pub operating hours. In that case, we'll have to use the rear. But in an ideal world, <coughs> yes, it would be a shared space. If you Ideally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it. Yes. Yeah. Can I? <coughs> the the two-story wings, sorry, my voice is going funny now. 
uh, which attaches to your building. <clears throat> Is there, was there anything in relation to the elevation that uh, exists any importance to that one? It's part of the listed building, is it? Well, it is part of the listed building. Yeah. It's actually quite old. Uh, yes. So it's very simple. The elevation is very simple, very pared down, very utilitarian, yeah. as opposed to the main frontage of the, of the pub, which has got some classical uh, composition. Um, there are this part of the, of, the, of the building used to bend yeah. and connect to the big functional room. And that's why there aren't any windows there. And that's the area where we're proposing this new, new aperture, the new door that gives access to the stairs. But other than that, there isn't a clear rhythm or identifiable composition in the facade. It's just okay. the but that facade <coughs> doesn't read. <coughs> Sorry about my voice. Inside your building, the, you've got a new facade over it. Is that correct? The, the it, end actually, it actually, it actually, it actually does in in a, in, a, in a way because. When you are in this um, yeah. open lobby, we, there are two kind of ramparts that yes. keep the building up, and we are exposing yes. those. Okay. So yeah. you will actually be able to read it. Nice. You can yeah. kind of see it there, and we we just had to, we made a feature out of those. If yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, two very quick questions. Um, it's been some interesting stories about poor doors and kids not getting access to the play area. Um, how are we going to designate car parking spaces? Is that for the private residents only? No. I so think. yeah, but you, you haven't got enough for the number of flats, so there will be, be some decision around that. So that's one we thing. haven't uh, allocated. I mean, no. at this point, the the section one hundred and six is in sign, so we haven't got to the bottom of how many okay. affordable units we have. So that's a different. The second stuff. thing, very quickly, um, you you mentioned building management. Um, how much building management are you? Envisaging because again that puts rents up, of course, service charge, some etc. Et yes. So, because I know you have to move the bins by building yes. management, is there any other? I mean, you're not talking about concierge service, absolutely not. No, no, no but, you can uh, see the, the, the communal areas are really yeah. pared down and very simple to maintain. The lobby is actually because it's an external space with the same paving as outside, so there's continuity, mm -hmm. so there's very limited uh, management there. Um, there will be there's a fair amount of green space that has to be maintained, and the same company will likely be able to provide the, 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 the service for the bins. There's, there's a lift as well to service it. There will be a charge. Any other comments? Yeah. Can I just make one comment? Personally, I think it's a good scheme. Congratulations, my view. It's a very nice scheme here. Uh, the best scheme tonight. Um, and uh, um, I like most of it. Minor point in relation to the entrance. I mean, you just mentioned that you got the two entry, the paving coming in. What I find um, perhaps it could be resolved better is that the staircase and the lift is kind of suddenly looks as it's it's there because it had to be there rather than you wanted it to be there. I don't know whether it would have been nicer to even see the staircase a little bit more visible. I know people use the lift most of the time, but it's a shame to, and uh, not to become part of the entry, part, part of the celebration of you going into your uh, place, to your home. Yeah, I think it's a, actually quite a, a very good point, because you come in and you could yeah. do something interesting mm -hmm. there. I think we were, we were driven by back regs, <laughs> more <laughs> than <laughs> architectural ambition on that one. I think yeah. it's something that we- But you've got so different. much uh, yeah. interesting design that I think I'm sure you can easily resolve mm -hmm. that and I think that would be a benefit. Yep. I think where it, where that shot manifests through the roof as well yes. just seems a little blunt. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's and because you've got yes. the head of the stair you, yeah. you don't need actually you could shave the corner off that. Yeah. Uh, it just seems to be a, 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 a Perhaps a, a little bit of finesse. It's there. heavy, it's very heavy yes. because the rest of it is very playful, very nicely with yeah. the roof playing on the nice, uh, creating nice shapes. But that one, it suddenly looks like a, um, what do you call it, the tower of the theatre. Yeah, it's there. like a flight yeah. tower, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it needn't be. Yeah. So no, that absolutely, you could shave off a fair amount yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be rather you nice. A bit window, echo, yeah. The material also well, would help rather than a darker brick. I don't know that you don't need something straight. 
I, I agree. I think it's a bit hard. <laughs> you need something to offset that all these things are offsetting again. But so that's my only. Maybe yeah. it's what it was high, originally. We were looking at, at these roofs and, and lines, mm -hmm. and you know these square elements kind of stuck into the roof, and that's why we used we we, we inserted these dormers, which are basically yeah. cubes, yeah. Yeah. and this was a, a bigger brother to, mm -hmm. to, to those. So yeah. there is an element of that wanting something not too big now. Yeah, but, but, but there are probably there is definitely scope to animate it a bit. Even if it was glazed, a bit more. Yeah, even a window, a window would be intriguing, actually, wouldn't it? Would be nice inside. Yeah. Absolutely. But I mean, this yeah, this is it's in planning, isn't it? So it's kind of. You can modify it sometimes if you want to do it to material and burn it I mean, my comment on this is I think this is, this is a, a very well thought through. It's kind of the way you should be building new development next mm. to listed buildings. Um, it's it's actually, for, for colleagues on the panel, it's quite a contrast this to the one we've just seen, isn't it? Because by virtue of... It, it has a character of its own. It's a contemporary building, but it respects what's around it. It's... Um, I think your explanation of how you arrived at that roof is, is really helpful. Um, it reminds me a little bit of... Cambridge or somewhere like that, you know, you go into a little pub courtyard and there's a new, interesting new development behind. I mean, Mitcham as Cambridge, now that's a thought <laughs> to, to go home, because Mitcham's got so much potential and so many of these lovely lists of buildings, mm. and the idea that you create a proper courtyard at the back, slight, my, I have a slight nervousness about half of that courtyard being private amenity space for the flats hidden by a hedge that uh, looks as though it's only about four and a half feet high. Mm. It, uh, it clearly, the hedge will not do anything acoustically. Acoustically, that is one rectangular courtyard space. So if I'm sitting trying to read a novel on the lawn in, in my private amenity space and three meters away, a couple of guys are you know, at shouting at each other and having fags, it, it probably... It's not as idyllic as it could be, but hey, I'll try. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a fairly, you know, I don't know that there's an easy way to solve that, but visually it's very attractive. I just think acoustically, you know, this is the trouble with these CGI's and things. You can see what a building looks like Absolutely. easily nowadays, but what does it feel like? What does it sound like? What? What does it sound like? Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's with, with architecture's about space. And you can't see space, but you can hear it. You really can hear it. And uh, but overall, I think it's it's a really nice development. Yeah, I think so. yeah. And note, everybody, it is taller than the listed building. Mm. Substantially taller than the listed building, and it manages that relationship, which I think is to your great credit. And, and very good presentation. Actually, it's quite easy to read, and yeah, which yeah. helps a great deal. Yeah. It's also what we need to do in London with all these urban infill sites. Mm. It's the only way to kind of get the housing numbers we need. Mm. So we're coming from the hierarchy of the space planning internally. Sure. Um, so I know you've got the deck access and you can see where you needed it. Mm -hmm. um, but it does go past the bedroom windows. Um, mm. And I don't know whether maybe if we're talking about the core and how it's achieved upwards, whether actually maybe it'd be better internalised or something so that you could maybe have an internal corridor that would then prevent, you could properly get dual aspects. So some may be single aspect, but you could never have this open. Yeah. I mean, then it would become single aspect, obviously. But they pretty much are single aspect, if you're not going to open Yeah, but you do have quite good cross-ventilation with this topology. Uh, mm. What we normally do is we put um, some frosting up to a certain height and the higher bit of the window is then clear. Uh, the corridor is a metre and a half, so there's not really much scope for planting, or, but we could try and, and address that with some sort of defensible buffer space. I think that would make it a much 
Yeah. Yeah. It would be impossible to make it a little bit yeah. wider anyway. Mm -hmm. It was like two meters. It would make a difference actually. You could also have a bit more distance from the windows mm -hmm. as you walk around. I think you've got quality stable composition but, um, on some of the internal planets that it leaves itself. So on the end plus as well, you've got your amenity space right at the back, opposite, opposite the main bedroom right than the living space. And whether again the hierarchy of that flat could, could change to that amenity space was linked. It's more spacing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we, we did. So, there's just a few things that, that it's minor, but there's a few yeah. things that could actually take it from ticking most of the buttons to actually being successful in terms of spatial planning. Well. No, we, you can look at that for sure. Okay. It's obviously uh, because it stacks with the flats above, and it's a bit difficult to change the layout completely, and the flats above really want the balcony at the front, so it's kind of three again, against one, so the one above the bottom. Of the but that will then be your social housing, but you see, so they'll have their yeah. very same. It's just yeah, we'll, I think what we'll try and do is try and, and make down. more use of yeah. this area for amenity rather than the back. We, we <coughs> should have done that yeah. in hindsight and have a direct access from the living areas from there. That would probably be a lot better. It's quite simple, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that's my name. And then you've got a really weird cupboard on the floor plan. It looks like <laughs> that is a lot of things. I don't know what it was. Oh, yeah. It's storage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really useful. Um, just to say, uh, I'm still concerned about that public courtyard and the noise because you talk about attenuation. It's going to have to be a masonry wall at least two metres high, not quite like your visualisation, because you're bound to have effectively tensions between two uses and some pretty noisy neighbours. And you said before you might have to preclude anybody complaining about the neighbours once they move in there because people, like people who are moving near, near airports and complain about the noise is, yeah. you never find someone who buys an next unit to the pub but then complains about they've got longer opening hours and cans are being thrown over yeah. and all the rest of it um, I mean I would have certainly explored the idea of that building we've got at the moment being turned around 90 degrees and creating a public square so you have a public face coming off a, a public area and a private area to the other side and completely separate the noisy frontage is public frontage, and then close the courtyard as well, and maybe with a more generous courtyard. But you're thinking, if we don't know quite why the pub failed, there's, there's really very little in the scene that seems to be capable of resurrecting it as a pub, unless you provide facilities it doesn't really enjoy at the moment. And having a really a larger public square would seem to be an asset that might actually, with outside eating, outside dining, actually give more of a bit of life to it. And also having a frontage that comes off what seemed to be more of a, a mew square, so that all the noise is hitting the front face, and then deal with the back and privacy mm -hmm. as a separate issue. Because I, I just think you've got a juxtaposition of two uses that could be creating quite a bit of tension between them. Mm. And that pick, this agent of change uh, notion is obviously picking up a bit of momentum now, isn't it? And that was the phrase I was thinking of, agent of change. <laughs> Yeah, I think there is, there is strong recognition now, certainly within the development industry, planning certainly, that um, this age of change principle, that you know, whoever arrives second, so to speak, has to put up with whatever, whatever was there first, and mm. the pub-residential relationship is a classic um, yeah. of that. Um, I, 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 I'm dealing with a similar situation on another site and we're in discussion, this is uh, Lucian Council actually, and, and yeah, there's, there's a discussion ongoing about how that could be controlled um, even through conditional legal agreement or something like that, so that absolutely no way can anybody living in this future development complain or seek noise abatement mm. orders because they should know that they're mm. moving into somewhere that's isn't going to be as tranquil, say, as other locations. Yeah, well, some of it did it with Ministry of Sound, so it's yeah. doable. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, that's not to say you couldn't also look at it from a site planning point of view to reduce the, the potential points of conflict as well. So I think if you don't have at least a two metre high wall, there's no way you're going to attenuate the sound from a lot of people drinking to 11 o'clock at night and yelling and all the rest of it. You'll be too close. That's the only thing, Mason is the only thing that's going to do to well, you could do it. acoustics, isn't it? You could, well, you could do it with plants. But generally it's mass that stops sound, isn't it? I mean, so many people believe landscaping was going to do an acoustic job, and it won't. Yeah, yeah um, no, it won't. No, you, yeah. need, you need an imperforate 
massive wall, but you're going to get leakage around the side of it anyway. I mean, if, if, if that space couldn't take a two metre masonry wall, it would completely... Well, the trouble is, glass has got reverberation as well. I mean, you want something which is both tall with mass and absorption. You know, and glass well, isn't going to work. glass up. and greenery together could do that, actually, couldn't they? Yeah, they, they the, the, glass the, the, glass. the glass is pretty reverberant. The wall is incredibly reverberant. Mm -hmm. So a masonry wall will reflect 97% of sound. It will reflect sound more faithfully than a mirror will reflect light. Yeah. There's plenty of acoustic barriers to the usual yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I think so there are acoustic barriers. What you want is an invisible acoustic yeah. barrier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it is. I mean, it, that is a practical difficulty, and yeah, it's yeah. this. The, and I touched on it earlier. It's like the CGI looks beautiful, yeah. and your eyes think, "Oh, it's lovely," and then you think, mm, "What's it actually mm. going to be like?" So, so no one has beers. No one's smoking. No one's yeah. <laughs> no, but then you can modify the license to be outside only until nine. I mean, again. We do that sometimes. Is there, is so there are ways of the client to get it rented as a pub. Yeah. Sorry? Is there a commitment from the client to get it rented out as a pub? Yeah. It's or is there sort of market. thought? It's, it's on the market at the moment. Does demonstrate you can't rent it after two years or to actually really? It's very difficult. I mean, <laughs> it's very difficult. The, the, the pub in front hasn't been used in the Burn, Burn Bullock been closed for a long time. Yeah. The old cricketers have got rooms now being demolished. And, and Wait, that's what I mean. Is it actually maybe a long time to think about it as a mm -hmm. residential In my work, well. I mean, it's at the moment, the idea is to retain the pub and manage the coexistence of the pub users and, and the residents, but I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. I wonder whether there's also a case of saying, well, it's actually turning that area into quite a civilised environment and that by putting the residential there it might develop a different kind of environment for the pub and a different kind of pub and you know you could also see it as that it's injecting something that might be, be, be a positive mm -hmm. change. I think we, yeah. and yeah. It, uh, at the moment whilst that space does exist it isn't a space that you would want to sit and have a drink or a cigarette, you know just enjoy, you wouldn't enjoy it um, and this development, I think, coming back to the question that somebody asked, is there something that this development can do to make the pub more viable? And yes, I think yeah. this does help its viability, as you say, it creates a, an attractive environment. Another half a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, shall I sign up? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just quite an easy summing up from what I've heard is that there's a lot of enthusiasm for this scheme. And architecture and the way it's been put together. Um, uh, the main areas of concern, really, apart from a few sort of internal ones which could probably be resolved, is how that middle space operates uh, and whether it, whether it works. And there's been uh, people who have said it could be good as it is, people have said it could be problematic as it is, and uh, someone suggested a, a physical site planning or fundamental changes perhaps or could be um, <coughs> done to, to, to change how it, how it works. So um, th that's that's the only main issue I see that's been raised here. And the, and the, and the fly tower. The fly tower. Yeah. Yeah. Internally and externally, I think. Verdict? Mm. This is an application. Oh, oh. It's going to planning. I don't know, but what does it mean in terms of... It, it means that, if you put it in simplistic terms, it's that your, your verdict will be noted um, by the Planning Applications Committee as much as um, by the applicant. Because it is pre app the applicant, you're really talking to the applicant before it gets there. The way I put it, and Paul always corrects me when I say it, but I'll say it anyway, is that a pre app our job is to help the applicant get as good a scheme as possible. Once it's an application, our job is to advise the Planning Applications Committee whether it's a design that they should give mm -hmm. consent to or not. So we're generally slightly hard to please at the application stage because we're advising the elected members. So is, is that issue a big enough issue? The, the, oh, 
immensely spaced the stroke of God and big enough issue to stop it getting what you would like I to don't think so. Not, not in my view. As, as a team, I mean, are these things that you would take away and tweak? So I mean, the design mind. elements, I think, will make better schemes. So we're happy to put in that substitution of the current drawings. So in terms of the, the arrangement for the entrance and potentially some changes to the layout and the stairs, that's that's one that I'm actually quite excited to do. And so I would definitely do that. And maybe get a bit of acoustic advice on how you yeah, might manage that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, is there anything particularly innovative that yeah. 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 There could be a condition. Are a classic. So what you do is you have a small fountain very near to where you want to feel peaceful between you and the sound. So a small sound close to it will mask a large sound further away. I've got one in my garden, it's irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a green. So that you know. Yes, yeah, green. Yeah, green. Yeah. Okay, good.